just when you thought it was safe to go to bed, wait till tomorrow to see what happens at the end of the trade deadline. Woj Shams off the top rope with an absolute nuke that the Phoenix Suns have acquired Kevin Durant from the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets have completely torn it down. They traded Kyrie Irving to the Mavericks earlier this week after he surprised everyone with a trade demand or did not surprise everyone, uh, depending on how you feel about Kyrie. But move on from Kyrie. Traded Kevin Durant now. It is officially rebuild time in Brooklyn. The details of the trade are pretty staggering considering Kevin Durant is still out with a knee injury right now with no return timetable yet. Uh, but the Suns, sensing that this is their window, they go all in here. They are trading Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, four unprotected first round picks, and a 2028 pick swap to Brooklyn in exchange for Kevin Durant and TJ Warren who is a pretty good sneaky pickup here. Like, it's not just Kevin Durant. Like, Kevin Durant and TJ Warren, like, can't hate that. The Suns immediately vault up to the upper echelon once again of Western Conference teams. The Western Conference is absolutely insane. I don't think I've seen a stacked division like this in really years as an NBA fan. Like, I can't think of the last one. But... Now you have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton on the Suns, the New Look Mavericks with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, who we have yet to see play together. The Los Angeles Lakers just retooled and brought back D'Angelo Russell, added Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt. The Warriors still have plenty of options. It is going to be a bloodbath in that Western Conference. For the, for the Nets, if KD was like, hey, I wanted, I want out, he wanted out over the summer anyways, he said... Trade me, fire Steve Nash, maybe do both. Um, the Nets are in full rebuild mode. They're going to reportedly uh, look for deals surrounding Jay Crowder, who has been a popular name in trade talks this, uh, really this whole season, with uh, potential like contending teams wanting to add him as a veteran presence and a, a 3 and D type of swingman. And other than that, they have some pretty strong building blocks here. Mikhail Bridges is like a more offensively competent uh, OG and Anobi, where he's like a really good defender. He can score a lot more, and he's an Ironman. I don't think he has ever missed a game. Maybe one, and possibly his next game, because he has been traded. So he he probably going to miss the Nets next game. Cam Johnson recently came back from injury, and he has been uh, just another 3 and D model of consistency. I think he's developed a lot better than... Um, than I expected, but I should say I wasn't super familiar with him coming out of college, but it feels like he's had the type of career that's really surprised a lot of analysts who kind of thought he would just fill a specific role. And picks, obviously this is going to be all about the picks for the Nets, who now have a big three consisting of Mikhail Bridges, uh, <clears throat> Cam Thomas, and Ben Simmons. Not exactly what you thought you were getting with KD and Kyrie when they first came. And it's funny, the, the second I saw this notification from Shams, the second I saw this trade, my first thought wasn't, man, the Suns are stacked. Man, the Nets, how far they've fallen. My first thought was about Mr. Whammy. Mr. Whammy, the Brooklyn Nets super fan who was always there with his wife, Mrs. Whammy always has these signs that he holds up for players, whether they're uh, returning players that used to be on the Nets or players on the Nets that he's supporting. Uh, he has, like, he curses the opposing team's free throws. And my first thought was, like, this poor guy. Like, imagine you're the Nets super fan and your team has D'Angelo Russell and Spencer Dinwiddie and Karis LeVert and Joe Harris and, and Jared Allen and everyone's dancing on the bench and the vibes are immaculate and they have the Coogee sweater jerseys and everything's great. Kenny Atkinson's looking like a good young coach. Sean Marks is an incredible GM. You're on the rise. Next thing you know, you have a super team. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Kenny Atkinson is gone. Steve Nash, the legendary point guard, is now going to coach your team. That falls apart pretty quick. Trade and bring in James Harden. 
That trio plays like 10 games together. Harden's gone. <laughs> Bring in Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons less than uh, thrilling so far with his returns in Brooklyn. I'm sure the fans are already pretty tired of him. I read something that said he has like no trade, like negative trade value, which is like a brutal thing to read. Like, you know, maybe it's accepted and it's true, but like, damn, <laughs> to read that, like, I was like, I'm not Ben Simmons. I'm not particularly a big fan of Ben Simmons, but God, that, ugh, that's brutal to read. In, a, in an ego-dominant league and sport like this. That's... Oof. So, shout out to Mr. Whammy. Good times are coming. Uh, keep your head up. That goes for all Nets fans. Uh, for the Net, or for the Suns, this is a win right now, all in, we have to do this now type of move. Chris Paul has definitely looked every bit of his age this year. There has been a massive regression. The Suns just got Devin Booker back from injury and beat these Nets, actually, the other night. So who knows, because Devin missed, I believe it was like a month and a half, with a with a hamstring injury, I think it was. And the, obviously the complexion of this team changes completely. But keeping Aiton, keeping Torrey Craig, adding in TJ Warren, obviously Kevin Durant, it goes without saying... But Kevin Durant, the injuries are starting to mount up as he gets on and on in his career. Chris Paul, like I just said, fallen off already a bit and is showing signs. This is a, a gigantic vote of confidence in Devin Booker to stay healthy and carry you to the playoffs. Maybe the thought is if Kevin Durant does not have to do what he was doing in Brooklyn, which was basically everything, carry everything, um, maybe you save him and you can avoid those nagging, like lower body injuries or, or little things that kind of pop up over a season and he can just kind of acclimate. It's funny that he, you know, he leaves the Warriors super team to go try to do it on his own with the Nets. And there was all that talk about him and Kyrie and doing it and on their own and their own legacy. And now here we are where that is over. He's on the Suns now. Uh, I'm surprised Honestly, I mean, the Nets wouldn't have traded him in the East, I don't think. But, like, to not wait till the summer to to try to pursue a trade, knowing how stacked the West is. Also, I need, like, five or six tell-all books about this Nets team over the last couple of years. Because they asked Kyrie about it after the Mavericks game. Mavericks won his debut game uh, versus the Clippers. But they asked Kyrie about this trade, and part of his answer was, like, I'm just glad he got out. Like, what? <laughs> he was there because you guys wanted to be there. Like, I, I need documentaries. I need books. I need everything there is to know about these three years of the Brooklyn Nets with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving because that is unbelievable. I was floored when I heard him say that. So... Who knows? I don't. I don't know um, what the net strategy here is. If they're gonna try to trade young players, if they're gonna you know look at Cam Thomas as the franchise cornerstone that he is and deserves to be. Uh, Nick Claxton has had a unbelievably stellar campaign, but it's it's a shocking fall from grace because before Kevin's injury, before Katie went down, the Nets looked like the best team in the East, and the East is now stunningly wide open. Uh, it was before, but you you shift the Nets out like this, and it really is just a five-team race now with uh, the Celtics, the 76ers, the Bucks, and to a lesser extent, probably the Miami Heat and the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm really curious to see what any of those five teams do tomorrow for the trade deadline because this has to be like a window of opportunity here. Jason Tatum playing at an MVP level. Giannis Antetokounmpo, probably the best player in the world right now. It is debatable, sure. But the East is, is definitely looking to go through those two teams. I'm wondering if this is going to impact the Bulls and their strategy. If they kind of think, okay, maybe we don't need to blow it up and trade everyone away. This is just, this is a shocking move, and I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with the rest of these trades tonight and into tomorrow, leading up to the deadline. Uh, that's everything I think I have on this one. Did not expect to hop on again and record this. I uh, just posted something a little bit ago about D'Angelo Russell returning to the Lakers and how big that was personally for me uh, as a Lakers fan, but this, I did not in a million years see this coming. 
Uh, so please let me know your thoughts on this trade, what you think that does to the Western Conference, if the Suns are the favorites, if this is a desperation move for them, uh, if you think it'll work or not. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts on all this, predictions for trades we might see tomorrow, moves you would want your team to make. Uh, Nets fans, if you're out there watching this, let it all out. This is a safe place. It's okay. Um, thank you very much for watching. Let's, let's have a good trade deadline tomorrow. Let's see what happens.